Yo, my name is Major Slack, Skyrim specialist, empowering gamers of all skill levels to take on Skyrim at the highest difficulty setting, legendary difficulty. Meet the new kid on the block, Lazy Boy Longblades, level 36, ebony clad, dual wielding warrior extraordinaire. Featuring maximum armor, maximum magic resistance, additional 42% fire, frost, and shock resistance, auto heals in combat. What? You heard correctly, this badass mother is practically invincible. Enchant and one-handed weapons that always stay charged. No way. Way. No dual wield hotkey problem. Close to 500 damage per hit. Much more with power attacks. No racial power is required. Berserker rage. I don't need no stinking berserker rage. Can operate almost entirely without crowd control, which means no babysitting followers. No dancing around astronauts. This bad boy does it all. All by his lonesome. How are you in battle, boy? Good question, let's give him the bleak wind basin smell test. Two giants and three mammoths. Go get him, lazy boy. Boom, one giant down. Let's go get another. And this one looks like he's bringing it with a giant club power smack. Can lazy boy take the heat? Boy, yeah! And two giants down. Let's go mow down some mammoths. Now, be advised, lazy boy does come with one disclaimer. All those elitist killjoys that have nothing better to do than to stalk around the internet trying to convince everyone that as soon as they start kicking ass in a video game, they're no longer having fun, are now going to become your worst enemies. Because with Lazy Boy, you will kick ass. And believe me, this beat em up with reckless abandoned gameplay is a hell of a lot of fun. This self-contained, low-maintenance gladiator is the most powerful build I've ever created. I did this entire battle without health potions and without healing spells. Although Lazy Boy does keep a batch of health potions on hand for the occasional emergency, most of the time he doesn't need them. Yep, when I first took this build into combat, it had me doing double takes every five minutes. Had to keep checking the settings to make sure I was still on legendary difficulty. Slack, there's no way this is on legendary difficulty. Eh, wrong. And of course he is dragon ready. Elder Dragon smell test. Dude! Oh man, that's what I'm talking about. Any questions? I want one! Me too! That's not a question. Are you gonna do a walkthrough? Yes, starting now. Major Slack Attack. Wait, you there. Step forward. Who are you? All right, here we go. Dual wield warrior extraordinaire. Let's make him a Breton. You always play as a Breton, Slack. No, no, that's not true. First legendary run that launched my ebook, Dark Elf, 30 day deer hunter challenge, High Elf, Pure Thief warrior walkthrough, Imperial, very first walkthrough I ever did, Khajiit, crash test dummy for several special edition videos, Nord, pure warrior walkthrough that we just finished a couple weeks ago, Orc, legendary survival walkthrough, Redguard, well, okay, but you've never done a walkthrough as a wood elf. Or an Argonian. That's true. Why not? Because they suck. <laughs> alright, alright, calm down, calm down. Note to self, do walkthroughs using a wood elf and an Argonian. Duly noted. Moving right along. As we saw in the intro, our dual wield warrior is going to do just fine without Berserker Raid, so we don't need to make him an orc. You'll be just fine as a Breton. Reason why? We want to go for that extra 25% magic resistance, so let's do it. Breton he is. Next. X chromosome? Or Y chromosome? Let's go for Y. Why, Slack? Well, I started a lot of walkthroughs as woman. Let's do the equal opportunity thing here and try to even things out a little bit. <laughs> Next. Presets. Nope. 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 Oh, for the love of Gordon Freeman. Hell no. Bingo. That's our boy. Yeah. Yep. He's got hair. He's got scars. He hasn't shaved since Thanksgiving. Perfect. <laughs> Let's give him a voice. You there. Say something to the nice people. Hey, Slack. Not bad. Not bad. But I think he needs a little attitude. Let's beef him up a little bit. There we go. And he's a warrior. Let's give him some war paint. Bingo. War paint color. 
Blood red. That's the one. Let's make his scars match his war paint. Beautiful. Beautiful. Perfect. Yeah, I think that calls for a Mr. Burns. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Now, how about a little lipstick? You there, unnamed warrior. What do you think? Pretty woman. What the I fuck, Slack? What, a little pink lipstick? Come on, it'll be funny. No lipstick! And kill that damn music! Alright, alright, no lipstick. You wuss. <laughs> Bet you that gave you some attitude. Now say something to the nice people. Fight me! Atta boy! Alright, I think he's ready. Let's give him a name. How about... Two-Gun Cochrane. What do you think they're unnamed warrior? What the what kind of stupid name is that, Slack? What, you don't want to be named after a legendary gunfighter in an Academy Award winning movie? Well, uh, I really hate to be a nitpicker, Slack, but uh, there's no guns in this game. Well, we could always call you punk ass bitch. Uh, hold up there, Slack. Hold, hold up, hold up. Let's not be hasty. Let's not be hasty. Uh, how about Two Gun Cochrane? <laughs> Doesn't sound so bad now, does it? Tell you what. Let's give you a name that reflects your playstyle. Okay, unnamed warrior, what is your playstyle? Well, uh, I want to get the most with the least amount of effort. Get the most with the least amount of effort. Okay, how about Lazy Boy? Hey, I like that. Lazy Boy, Long Blades since you're a dual-wielding warrior. Unless our audience can come up with something better. Okay, everybody, here we go. I want to name him Lazy Boy, that's for sure. But his family name is up for grabs. Post a comment. What shall we name him? Lazy Boy... What? For now, it's going to be Long Blades. Get on with it! All right, all right, calm down, calm down. We're done, we're done. Let's do this. Are you from Daggerfall, Breton? Fleeing from some court intrigue? Captain. What should we do? He's not on the list. Forget the list. He goes to the block. By your orders, Captain. I'm sorry. We'll make sure your remains are returned to High Rock. Give them their last rites. As we commend your souls to Aetherius, blessings of the eight divines upon For the love of Talos, shut up and let's get this over with. As you wish. Death to the Stormcloaks! As fearless in death as he was in life. Uh, not for nothing, Rayloff, but on account of his impatience, the rest of the prisoners are gonna die that much quicker. You say fearless? I say blithering idiot. Wish we could sew his head back on so we could kill him again. Ah! There you go, numbnut. You happy now? <laughs> and Q Dragon? Alright, let's speed run through the burning village. This is a trick that none of the speedrunners have ever bothered to explain, but I will explain it. Alright, here we go. Wait for the dragon to break through the wall. Breaks through the wall. Jump on his wing before he breathes fire. Turn around. Drop down on the ledge. Shimmy around. Look for the top of the wall. Drop down on top of the wall and you're home free. Jump up here. Jump up here. Jump over here. Turn to the right. Drop down here. And you're at the doorway where you can go in with Hadvar. Boom. What is this, a speedrun slack? No, 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 I, I just threw that in for gits and shiggles. I've been working on that move lately. Really hard to pull off. Practiced for about an hour straight about a week ago. And the best I could do was like a 5% success rate. It's like three times out of 50, 50 times I tried. And then I recorded one of my successful attempts and put it in a video editor and watched it back in slow-mo. And I finally figured out a few things. So now my success rate is about 50%. The hardest part being jumping from the dragon's wing to the ledge. That's the hardest part. Don't know how the speedrunners manage to pull that off every single time. And none of them seem to want to share, you know, their secrets. So, anyways. Okay, so, um, just collected the stuff in here. A couple of iron swords is very important. And we're just going <laughs> to speed run <laughs> through Helgen Keep. So this is a speedrun. No, no, it's not a speedrun. Just uh, uh, doing things a little differently here. 
Um, about Lazy Boy, as I said, his playstyle is to get the most for the least amount of effort. And this, of course, means he'll be doing a lot of thieving. And I just want to check this large sack here because often there's tomatoes in there. Not this time, just salt pile. Yeah, a lot of thieving. Uh, but he won't be obliged to only deal in stolen goods as I did in my pure thief run. In here, since we went ahead without Hadvar, we're going to cast in our Conjure Familiar spell, which I call Blue Dog. Shut the door immediately so he doesn't come back out. And then as soon as you hear him engage the enemies, run in. And you can have a few minutes or a minute or so to quickly loot that barrel for some minor magical potions. The Rock Warbler Egg and the Health Potion and the Salt Pile. And down here in the torture room, we want the novice hood and the novice robes from this dead mage in the cage here. Right, boom, here, grab that, and over we go. And that's that's it. That's all I want from Helgen Keep. And we're just going to run out. Um, yeah, so like I was saying, so though, for those of you who commented in my thief run that a thief should be allowed to loot the dead, well, here's your big chance to have the best of both worlds, okay? Lazy Boy is a thief, but he's also going to be looting. Um, and Lazy Boy and I have worked out this really excellent business plan where we use high value power potions, something I never do, okay? That's potions created specifically for money to purchase enchanting skill training. What? Yeah, purchase enchanting skill training all the way up to level 80. And this is very different from what I normally do. Normally I don't go after high value potions because ingredients like giant's toe are, are uncommon and they're hard to come by and um and i never ever buy enchanting skill training never i always use my special power enchanting machine which actually makes you money as you level up enchanting so this special business model you're about to see in this walkthrough is very effective and is it's going to make you filthy rich like really filthy rich and like i said it's very different from what i normally do and that's it that's all she wrote for Helgen Keep. And when we get outside, we're going to get down to business. Well, yeah, let's do this. Let's get our rip and run on. Down the road here. Going to collect a whole bunch of mountain flowers. Typically, blue mountain flowers. That's what we're looking for. So we can mix them with giant's toe. If you stand right in the middle of this patch here, you can just spin around and quickly collect all these mountain flowers here. Oh, we got a blue butterfly wing. There you go. We got that. Go across the road. Get the red. Get another blue and purple here. Go over here. Get a purple here. Another blue. Get some reds here. More tapping in on here. Continue on down the road. Stick to the right side. Look for the log. Get a couple more blues here. Down here, blue. Whole bunch of assorted there. Crossroad here. And that should be easily 10 blue mountain flowers right there. There we go, we got 10. Where are you gonna get the giants till it's like we're gonna rip them off? <laughs> There's 11. That bandit camp over there, you can see the tent right there, it's got some black mage robes, which are worth 153 gold. All we have to do is just throw in blue dog, see if you can distract him. I think they're already distracted by something, okay that's good, they, they're right here, grab them and run. There they are right there. And there the other two are. There's typically three of them. They're blocking the, the where I want to go. Up the log path. Good blue dogs on him. You're looking for the Thalmor soldier here. He's always here. He's always got an enchanted item on, on him. This time it's the iron boots of resist shock. Completely random. Could be a wolf here. Watch out. You there. Take care of the wolf. Come on. Do your job. And you can always escape the wolf by jumping down here. And we're going to go over to the Guardian Stones. Pass Hunter's Camp. Nothing doing there. Up here. Hit up the Thief Stone. 
Bam. Hanging moss. Let's go take care of the guard at Ember Shard Mine. Just kind of clear out the area a bit. Because when we go fishing later on, we want kind of like everything clear so we can have a good look around. And I'll explain that later. Here we go, right up here. Come up to the back door. Looks like he's distracted by something too. Okay, what you want to do is kind of like just jump right down on top of this log here. You can get right down top of it like that. And cast a blue dog right in the hole there. Bring up your swords. Typically blue dog engages him. That's good. Jump out here behind him. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and go at him. While blue dogs got him engaged. Got him. Yeah, that's beautiful. Grab his stuff. Grab the... What's going on? You engaging the wolves? Great. We want to do that too. Usually a dual wielding power attack on wolves does a lot of damage, so you want to lead with that. Don't forget this woodcutter's axe here. That's very important. <laughs> Easy there, lazy boy. <laughs> Okay, there's two more wolves here. Um, can I wait? Yes, I can. Let's just recharge Blue Dog. Bring him up. Go behind here. Take the high ground. And survey the situation. Carefully come down. These wolves are a force to be reckoned with. Okay, cast up Blue Dog there. Go sniffing around, Blue Dog. Where's the wolf? Huh? Where's the wolf? This is the one time when you got default weapons. Two of the same default weapon. If you hotkey them. Um, see, I got them hotkeyed as number four. And all you have to do is just hit that hotkey twice and you can dual wield weapons. That's the only time you can do that. Anytime you like even improve the weapons, so if I improve these two iron swords, that won't work anymore. Or if you enchant them, that won't work anymore. Even if you enchant them or improve them exactly the same. But I'll show you how to get around that later on. That's a pain in the arse. Okay, so we've got two more wolves to take care of here. Let's just go scouting around. There's one right there. Let's go get him, blue dog. This way. Okay, I'm out of gas. Let's just, uh... <laughs> Always time big flowers, eh? Okay, I'm not sure what's going on. Looks like Blue Dog expired. Let's go across the river and recharge. Wait. Could use the potions that we got from, uh... Helgen Keep. You always get three magical potions there. All right. Here, Fido. There we go. <laughs> I love it. Got him. All right. Excellent. Guard is down. Wolves are down. Back to the Guardian Stones. Let's go discover Anissa's cabin. We're going to be using that as a headquarters later on. Is she going to let you slack? No. <laughs> That's a bit of an issue. So, you know, we're going to have to, like, <clears throat> get rid of her. But for now, let's just discover it so we can easily fast travel back here when the time is right. Okay, Anissa's cabin discovered. Watch out for a hostile event over that way. Go down here to this ledge. We're going to go for the flawless emerald that you can always find in a deer carcass. That's worth a pretty penny. Right here. Boom. Got it. Okay, let's go fishing. 
Get some big money salmon roe. Whoa, ba -da -ba. Okay, make sure you jump in the water, eh? <laughs> okay, yeah, the area is nice and clear now. So let's get on our fishing gear, which is the novice hood and the novice robes, which we got from um Hell can keep. Jump over here. Jump over here. Yep. Jump over here. Jump over here. Go around here. Yeah, we're going to fish one side at a time. I find this is a lot more effective. And you see them jumping there. Now, the way it works with salmon is if you catch salmon, we're after salmon roe. Salmon roe is the eggs that come from salmon. If you just go in the water and you catch salmon, all you're going to do is get salmon meat. If you kill salmon while they're jumping, you get salmon roe, which is extremely valuable. You can mix that with Nordic barnacle and garlic to make a ridiculously powerful and expensive potion. All right, that's what we're after. Now you can get as many as 11 from these two sides here, from the jumping salmon. Salmon, typically four here, and as many as seven on that side. I find it's a lot better to do one side at a time. Fry up one side, go collect, then fry up the other side. Okay, so that's a plan, let's do it. Usually you like to kind of like just scope out their their pasty by the way it's jumping there. Then count two seconds and fr and start frying. Thousand and one, thousand and two. Empty out, empty out the gas tank. If they stop jumping, you got them all. Looks like they got them all. Go down here. Let's go collecting. Look for the little. Any salmon you see dead, pick them up anyways, even if it does. That's the salmon roll right there. Then usually I like to go over here. This is a great spot to to see if you got them all. Go up here, it gives you a high ground view. Look all around carefully. All right. Let's do the inventory. And we got three, so we're missing one. That's not unusual. What you can do is just go along the shore here. Sometimes when you kill them, they kind of like flop all over the place and land on a rock or something. Or So you can look up and down the shoreline. Let me just do this off camera. Okay, looks like I only got three this time. Let's go back. And do the other side. Yeah, leap. Oh, there's one right there. Ha. Huh. All right. Good. Yeah, look around. I always look around because you never know where it's, where it's going to like land. Okay, we got four. Great. Excellent. Yep. Over here. Okay, same deal here. This is actually better on the other side. That's what I discovered. As soon as I Mr. Fumblefingers figures out a way back there. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Okay. Yeah, swim across here, all the way across here like this. Beautiful. Right around here, yeah. Beautiful. Okay, I love the way that one jumps. Watch this. Whee! Okay, scope them out. Count to two thousand, one thousand, two, and fry. That's clear. Oh, he gets them all. Okay, let's go collect them. You can see a lot of them right there. Grab them all quickly. Even the dead salmon, because sometimes the salmon roe doesn't appear. See this, watch this one. 
See? Even if you don't actually see the salmon roll, the red. Um, bingo, we got the full complement. Full, full 11. Excellent. Excellent. I think that calls for a Mr. Burns. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Burns. All right, beautiful. And we're going to do some more salmon roll fishing right here at these rapids here when we get down near Hunting Brew Meadery. That's later on. Now we're going to go to the back door of the Amber Shard Mine and do a little rip around there. That's coming up next video. Hey, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. See you next video. Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1. That's all. That's all it takes. All right. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it.